just two races left in the NASCAR regular season, and we are back where it all began. We had the qualifying earlier, and now it's time for the main event, the Vortex 720 right here on MSPN. I'm Rick O'Shea. Glad to have you here as NASMARB's penultimate race of the regular season takes us back to where we began the year. Here are our groupings on your screen. Electro, Winx, and Quilla will face off in Group 1. Group 2 is Murakami, Drizel, and Spitzer, then Oak, Earl, and Sal. Confetti, Nugget, Steve, Neptune, Jeff Marvin, Woodpecker, and then Bloodstorm, Prime, and Jack Tato in Group 6 as we will hopefully have some drivers lock their way into the playoffs. And the first driver that can do that by points is in this matchup right here. That's the 13 of Winx taking on the one seed Electro, who right now is four points below the cut line coming into this race. But the one seed in this race trying to finish it off and will to advance and upside down in the first turn is the nine of Quillo, who just barely made it in. And so Electro is through into the second round, out of the group stage. Looked like for a second there may be a pass attempt from Winks, but couldn't gain enough momentum to make that happen. And so Winks will now go one-on-one -on -one with Quillo. Big one if Winks can get it done, but here is Quillo, and Quillo's gonna do it! Winks! Unable to get out of the turn, flips at the exit of turn one, and is done. Could have been a big day for Winks not to be as Quillo, who's right now 10 points above the cut line, and in need of maybe a little bit of cushion room, able to get it done to get out of the group stage and guarantee a top 12. So good run there as we go into group two. Here is Murakami in must-win mode. Against Lemon, Drizel, and Spitzer. Two races left of the regular season, and Spitzer, I don't think, stayed on his wheels, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, did stay on his wheels, actually, but couldn't get out of the second turn. And so that will advance Murakami in the four and set up one on one with Lemon, Drizel, and Spitzer here. We have another look at the replay. Lemon, Drizel is just one of three drivers that can be the one seed, potentially. Streamer will be the one seed, lock that up today, even though he's not in the race. Streamer will be the one seed and lock that in if Lemon Drizel or, or Woodpecker do not win, as this will be a victory for Lemon Drizel to advance, and that will end Spitzer's run. And you can see on the replay, nothing really close. Not a great run from Spitzer in that group stage. A pretty easy advancement for both of the other drivers. That'll move us to Oak, Earl, and Sal. What an interesting grouping this is. Oak has had a great second half of the season resurgence. Going to try to continue that here and will advance as the three seed through easily. Earl gets stuck in the turn and will go one-on-one -on -one with Sal now for the final spot. Let's have another look at the replay. Pretty wide going into that first turn. And Oak uh, just kept it as straight as possible. That's great driving there from the 48. And a, really a feel-good story for that team after failing to qualify in each of the first two races, including the race that we had here to begin the season. Now this one between Earl and Sal will go to the 33. And the ukulele man, Earl, advances to the next round. Earl, who is right now six points above the cut line, as is Sal. That is a huge matchup there. And so Sal in a little bit of trouble now, and it's going to come down to that final race for the two-team. So we'll move now to group four. This is Confetti, Nugget, and Steve, and all three of these drivers are below the cut line. And this looks like it's going to be an easy win. Wow, that was not close, as you see two of the drivers unable to finish, and it will be an advancement there for Confetti. Confetti right now 26 points below the cut line. Nugget is 13 points below the cut line, and Steve is 19 points below the cut line. So they're all in some, uh, at least some different version of desperation mode, and it looked like the 17 came to play here so far in the group stage as they go one-on-one -on -one with Steve and Nugget, and it will be... Nope, it's going to be Nugget who will pull it out at the end. 
Steve looked like he was lining up for a pass, but Nugget advances. You can see, though, unless something drastic happens between this stage and the next, neither of these cars are going to compete for a win, at least today, in this championship matchup. That's just not going to happen unless something changes in those cars. They just didn't have the speed. As we move into the fifth group, Jeff Marbin is most certainly in win-now mode and must-win mode to make the playoffs as Woodpecker is going to advance easily. Woodpecker, of course, right now fourth in the standings, some 59 points behind the points lead, but still fourth in the standings and could still potentially be the uh, number one seed if he wins this race. And also wins next week. There's a lot of work to do to catch up to Streamer. As this will now be Neptune and Marbin. Jeff Marbin flips and Neptune advances into the next round. Neptune, who is 21 points below the cut line. In need of a couple of big weeks. And likely a win. Will advance into the final 12. Jeff Marbin's forgettable season continues with a flip here. Coming out of the first turn. Well, actually, not even out of. It was kind of into the middle of that first turn where Marvin flipped, couldn't even uh, hold it together that long. It's been a very disappointing season for the 24, and that continues here at the uh, Vortex 720 as we'll go to the last grouping. This is Bloodstorm in the 86. Right now the last car in the playoffs, needing a strong run and going to get it here in this group stage, winning it early, uh, easily here as both the 12 and 8 fail to advance or uh, even finish that lap there. And now they'll go one-on-one -on -one with each other as we have another look. And this one wasn't close. Looked like a little bit of contact between Prime uh, and Jack Tato there. And staying out of the drama, if you will, was the 86 of Bloodstorm and took an easy win. Jack Tato is 11 points below the cut line. And Prime is locked in despite having less points than uh, Jack Tato. But in, and now neither of these drivers are going to finish this lap again. They've gone two laps now and can't finish this course. They seem too involved with trying to get the other guy out of the way instead of just trying to run a clean lap. So they'll go again. Second try at a winner-take-all. Prime's got the advantage. Does Prime have enough to finish the lap? The answer is yes, and Prime is into the next round, and this is the best run Prime has had in a long time. Into the final 12. It's not a lot, but it is still better than a lot of the season for Prime after winning on this course, mind you, way back in the season opener. Maybe a chance to uh, repeat some magic for Prime, who will advance to the next round. And now these are one-on-one -on -one with the first to two wins. You know the drill. We'll start with the one seed and the 11 seed. That's Electro in the 93 and Nugget in the 16. As these guys will face off, there they are. Electro, as we said, needing a good run. Not in must-win territory. I would definitely qualify that more towards Nugget, who is 13 points back. But both these guys in search of good runs, and it's a good first start for Electro in the 93. Like a little bit of contact there. Yeah, almost like a turn attempt by the 16. Didn't happen whether that was on purpose or not. Uh, did not come through. And so it's a pretty easy win there for Electro, who has more speed, it seems. Let's see when they switch lanes what happens here. It's Electro still in the lead. Electro going to run a clean lap and easily take out the 16 of Nugget and advance to the next round into the final six now goes the 93. The pole sitter in today's matchup. And a lot of speed in that OB racing machine for Electro. The only OB racing machine in this tournament today after we mentioned a shocking failure to qualify by streamer as we move into Confetti and Quillo taking on each other. The 17 and the 9. Oh, contact. And Confetti is going to fend off the 9 of Quillo and take that first win as they both went into each other. Made a couple of more contact points going into and out of turn 1 and then just shutting the door is the 17 as Confetti takes the advantage. Should be an upset if Confetti can get it done here. And now Confetti makes a pass in the corner and finishes off Quillo. 
What a move by Confetti, and we'll get another look at it. Boy, that was impressive right there from the 17 as again they went into each other on the front straightaway and then turn two and then, oh, look at that. Great move. A little bit of a sideways mistake there by the nine, but you still got to get around the car, which we've seen in the past can be difficult. Not a problem at all for Confetti into the next round. As this is Murakami and Woodpecker. Four and the 43, and Murakami gets it done on the first try. As Woodpecker unable to finish. Murakami, we said, basically in must-win mode. And Bladestar Motorsports doing their best to try to get their cars in. Right now, Bloodstorm in the 86 is just hanging on by a thread. Still in this competition, though. And now Murakami's got the speed. Does Woodpecker have a move? Almost got there, but cannot. And it's a sweep for the four. Great aggressive driving by Woodpecker and some pretty good defensive driving from the four of Murakami. As you see right there, a little bit of a bump. And it looked like the 43 was going to try to turn that four machine if they could get to the bumper again. Didn't happen, though, and Murakami is moving on. As Neptune and Lemon Grisel will face off now. And Neptune... Gets out front, looked like a little bit of a problem with the back of the car for Drizel. We'll put Neptune ahead one up. The Mon Drizel is already locked in. If he doesn't win, no chance at the one seed, though. And Woodpecker just eliminated means that right here, Neptune could clinch the one seed for Streamer. Will it happen? Not on that one. Going backwards, try to pick up steam. But Drizel keeps it straight and advances. Uh, this one to a winner take all as we'll go to our third set here a pretty good speed for both those cars on that run especially with Neptune uh, turning around backwards for this one final one and Drizel gets the advantage it looked like a mistake from Neptune falls off the course somewhere down there there's the 11 and Lemon Drizel advances to the round of six and keeps his one seed hopes alive. So Streamer can't pop the uh, celebratory champagne quite yet. To celebrate that number one seed. It's doable that Lemon Drizel could still be the one seed. Unlikely with just two races left and two wins needed for that to happen. As Oak and Prime will now face off. These are two drivers that have gone in opposite directions this season. Prime won here. And has struggled basically ever since. Oak has done the exact opposite and will take this first heat. Oak failed to qualify the first two races of the year. And has really come on strong since. Has been a staple in the final six for quite a good portion of the second half of the season. And again, a little bit of a problem there for Prime. Although I will say Prime making it into this 12 matchup is, uh, I guess, positives. As Oak is going to go by and advance here into the final six. And there's just, there's something, I don't know if it's a, a psyche, uh, if it's, you know, a mental thing or if it's equipment, but there's something going on with the eight that is just causing issues for Prime and not allowing this team to perform where they were at the beginning of the year. As Bloodstorm and Earl will now face off. Big matchup here. Both these drivers in the playoff hunt. And Bloodstorm going to take this first heat as Earl slows and will not finish. Going across backwards there. Earl's right in the mix. Plus six. Bloodstorm is plus four. It's a big win for Bloodstorm if he can finish off this heat. Knock Earl down a bit. Then give himself a chance to make up some spots. With you already see Sal, who is a little bit ahead of him in the points, out as is Spitzer. Here we go again, and Bloodstorm's going to win this one by a mile and a half. Not close, and neither time can Earl finish the course. Bloodstorm into the final six. Does that one easily. Some contact force there by the 33. Looked like he came off the course a little bit and never recovered from that. Almost seemed like that contact kind of... Uh, sped up that 
86 machine and Bloodstorm able to put together a pretty good time to advance. There are the final six. Electro and Lemon Drizel, Murakami and Bloodstorm. Those are teammates right there, by the way. And then Oak and Confetti, neither of which qualified for the race we were here last time. They will qualify or will compete for a spot in the final three. First to three wins is going to get there. Electro and Lemon Drizel, and it's the 93 taking the first run. Doing it in convincing fashion. Nothing's overly close so far in today's tournament. A lot of driver error, and I uh, I don't know if that's how you'll uh, kind of categorize that one from Lemon Drizel, but uh, not a great run there in the 93. Takes a 1-0 lead over the 3. And now Drizel is not going to come back, at least not quick enough, and it's a 2-0 lead for Electro. Just looks like Electro is faster we mentioned, again, can't overstate enough the uh, decision by the OB Racing Team to put this focus into Electro, who gets flipped, but stays on the course, and Drizel can't take advantage because he didn't get out of the turn. Wow, that is a huge missed opportunity for Lemon Drizel down 2-0. And an opportunity where you automatically win if you finish the course. Instead, he's going to be swept away by Electro into the final three. As Electro, with a 3-0, honestly pretty dominant run there of Lemon Drizel. And that will clinch the number one seed for Streamer. And so now, OB Racing has a couple of reasons to celebrate. The 26 is in as the number one seed officially, and now their other driver, Electro in the 93, a great opportunity to make up points and potentially get into the playoffs. They're in the final three now, as Murakami and Bloodstorm face off. Murakami trying to spoil the party as he's gonna take that first one against Bloodstorm. And it is a disaster if Murakami wins, if you're those cut line teams. That would move Bloodstorm if we just had it happen right now. Not only would Electro still be below the line, but Bloodstorm would drop below the cut line. His teammates certainly not going to give each other anything, and it's a 2-0 lead for Murakami. Pretty clean run there. I'm not sure if they made contact at all. Maybe a little contact there, but they may not have actually touched at all. It was a clean race, pretty well run from both drivers. Just more speed in the four on that one. And a chance for another sweep as Murakami looks to get into the final three. There is contact there. Bloodstorm needed to make a move, does, and keeps their tournament alive here. Make it two to one. Still needs to win the next two as well. After falling behind 2-0. And here we go. Uh oh sliding trouble for Bloodstorm. Murakami needs to finish and will to advance to the final three. Murakami is in. Knocking out Bloodstorm here, and you can see a full spin from the 86, which meant that unless Murakami had some significant issues, it was all but over, and it ultimately was over. And now the final matchup, it is Oak, it is Confetti. If Confetti advances, we'll have three Drivers below the cut line in the finale. But it's Oak who takes the first one. Oak has done a better job coming back this season and takes a 2-0 lead here. Pretty easy one as well. As Confetti... We'll be running out of magic here today. Down 2-0. And seemingly being outrun here in this round of six matchup. And let's see if we can finish it off. And the answer is going to be yes. And in dominant fashion, Oak is in the final three. Great job from the 48 team to get in. They're a bubble team. Right now up by five points. And somebody's going to lock themselves into the playoffs and be a very happy crew leaving this race course. So we'll have our matchup for 4th, 5th, and 6th. Confetti, 
Lemon Drizel, Bloodstorm will all face off. They were the 4, 6, and 10 seeds coming in, and they will finish 4, 5, and 6. Let's see what happens. And it is going to be a pass for Bloodstorm. He's going to take fourth. Drizel is not going to be able to get out of the last turn, and so it'll be a rerun for fifth and sixth. As Bloodstorm made the pass, he'll finish fourth. That's a big points day for Bloodstorm. Good run. As Lemon Drizel unable to finish, which means that'll be a second chance for Confetti to get an extra point if he can pass Lemon Drizel. And he's going to do just that. Confetti takes fifth, sixth place for Lemon Drizel. And that will give us our chance to get all set up for the final and to lock another driver in with just now two races left. Things are about to get very interesting. Now, before we get to the final, I just want to let you know that NAS Marble is presented by the Marble Sports Worldwide Podcast. If you love Marble Sports, then check out the podcast using the link in the description. Each week, Brendan and Mr. Woff discuss the most relevant news in the Marble world from NAS Marble to JMR. It's a fascinating podcast, a great listen, and we are glad to have them as a partner here at NAS Marble. Uh, so check them out, and uh, we'll get ready for this final now. All right, and so with that out of the way, it's time for the final. First to four, you know the deal. It's Electro in the 93, Murakami in the four, Oak in the 48, the one, two, and three seeds. They were the fastest. In fact, the final six, only one of the not of the top six did not make it. The top six seeds, that is. And Electro going to take this win. Murakami second, Oak a distant third. First to four gives you a playoff spot. Murakami trying to throw a huge wrench in the plans of these teams that are on the playoff cut line. And I'm sure definitely sending shockwaves through the NASMARB community for next week's race, the final race of the season, as this is going to be Murakami who will take a win. Oak finishes second. And Electro third. And now Oak drops into third place, having not won one of the first two. Ooh, looked like he tried to turn Murakami there, but couldn't get it done. One one zero. Oh. This time it is Electro and a little bit of pressure, but not enough from the forty-eight. Electro takes a two one zero oh lead. And so now Electro a chance to take a pretty commanding lead if he can get a win here. Murakami trying to change that. Murakami has the lead and the win. Oak unable to finish and kind of out of it at this point. It's a 2-2-0 score. And everybody's sweating bullets over this four team and what they are doing right now. Two wins away from a very improbable playoff appearance. It is Oak in the lead and Oak will get on the board now. 2-2-1 as Murakami finishes a distant second and an even more distant third for the 93. That one wasn't close, and it gives Oak some hope there and a chance to really get back in it. Right again, now it is Electro in the lead, and a pass for second will be given to Oak, but that's just... A souvenir at this point as Electro is going to get the win and take a 3-2-1 lead. And now one more will put Electro in the playoffs. Murakami looking for a miraculous playoff appearance. Needs to continue it here. Here is Oak. Oak going to take the win. It's 3-2-2. And oh wow, Electro gets a wheel up on the course. Hoping that doesn't cause any kind of aerodynamical issues or anything. Moving forward for these last couple of runs. No issues with the car, we hope for them. But Oak is back in it. Murakami. Now I would assume you want to work with Oak here. Try to keep Electro out no matter what. That's not going to be the case unless there's a pass at the end. No, it's over. Electro gets the win. As you look at the replay, there was a turn. 
It was the four turning the 48 at the finish line, but it was over by then. A clean run that time, and you can see the pass. Oak had a chance, but the course would have had to been longer for Oak to actually be able to go. They're going to have to run here a one-on-one -on -one heat to finish out who finished, uh, excuse me, figure out who finishes second after they both scored two wins in the final. So our final race here is a one-on-one -on -one between Murakami and Oak, and it goes to Murakami. Oh, that was close. As Oak kept the pressure on the back bumper of the four. But some smooth, calm racing there from Murakami will give him the four, or the, excuse me, the second place finish. And you look at the points from today's race, Electro given 43, uh, excuse me, 44 points with that win. Murakami, Oak, Bloodstorm, and Confetti, other big winners. Going all the way down to Streamer and Mozilla, who failed to qualify. Streamer, again, already locked in and locked in as the one seed. No real harm there. Uh, but a little bit of harm for Mozilla, who's in a less favorable position now going into that final race of the season. And now there is a look at our standings. And we have quite a bit to go through here. As we have Streamer in, leading by 16 points. As we mentioned, locked in the playoffs now. Uh, Lemon Drizel is still locked in. I should say Streamer's locked into the one seed. Uh, Lemon Drizel is still in as far as uh, being in the playoffs, as is Woodpecker at 159 points. Electro is now in at 146 points, as is Prime, 16th overall in the standings, but locked into the field currently. Winx is in in fourth place. Uh, Oak moves to sixth place, up 26 points on the cut line now. Up 21 is Bloodstorm. Up 19 is Mozilla. He loses some points. Quillo gains four to go up 14. Uh, as Earl drops to just plus five. Plus three is Sal. Sal is the cutoff right now. A three-point lead over Spitzer. Confetti gets to within 10 points as well as Nugget. 12 points back is Neptune. 17 to Jack Tato. 23 to Steve and Murakami who are both tied with 96 points going into the final race. One driver has been mathematically eliminated from playoff contention and must win the final race. That is Jeff Marvin, who is 53 points back, has to win, guaranteed no chance that Marvin makes the playoffs without a win next week in the regular season finale. It all comes down to this one more race to determine this playoff field, one automatic spot to fill, and then the rest of the field of 12 will be determined for the first ever NASMAR playoffs. We hope you stay with us. But until next time, I'm Rick O'Shea, and you've been watching MSPN's coverage of NASMAR.